day. Welcome everybody, uh, closing speech today. Um, I want to talk about package building for uh, Triton and uh, I want to give you an introduction on how you can easily build packages using the so-called uh, open build service. So this is a way to have an automized, reproducible and reliable way uh, to build packages. Um, this uh, part of this um, presentation was given already uh, last year on the conference, but uh, I feel we have many new participants here which have uh, not been joining in Leipzig last year, so I think it was to repeat it, and this time I also want to uh, focus a little bit more on uh, the command line interface, which is very powerful and gives us uh, various options to work on that. So maybe uh, a few words to myself before that. I have an engineering background. Basically, I studied electrical engineering. Um, I'm working as a business consulting, mostly on implementation uh, with SAP. Um, mostly doing project management work the last years. Um, I'm with uh, Linux since about 15, 17 years or something like that. And then after a couple of years, I became a uh, member of the OpenSUSE project. Um, why OpenSUSE? Because, uh, first of all, it's a distribution that is very handy to administer if you're not a full-time Unix system administrator. So it has some, some very nice tools that make it easy for um, novices to start in. Uh, second of all, um, SUSE is a a community group project and it protects your privacy basically. Uh, if you talk to Richard Stallman on which is the, the worst Linux distribution in terms of privacy, you will get an answer which uh, will probably surprise you because it's a very popular uh, distribution. I will not tell you the name, you can look it up on uh, GNU.org. <laughs> we want the name. You want the name? Uh, maybe afterwards. <laughs> So yeah, what I'm doing, uh, I'm maintaining packages, uh, mostly for stuff that I'm using myself, so Triton and New Health, uh, but as well as some sailing software, for example. Um, I think there are two things that are very important for an economy, that is uh, uh, education and that is uh, health. So for the health sector, I'm supporting the New Health project with uh, building a live CD. And uh, on education, I'm supporting a project that is running in the favelas of Rio. It's called uh, Favela Education. So, but now let's uh, talk about the open build service uh, that provides you an easy way to uh, build packages. So we have a lot of open source software on the market, like uh, the Firefox browser, we have GIMP, we have WordPress and something like that. And the question is always, how does a distribution, how does a project bring its software to the users? Um, I mean, in the early days, that was quite simple. Most of the developers were the users, they were long-hand developers. Uh, so, what you could do there is, you could just send the source code over, the end user compiled it, and it running. Okay. Hello? Okay. So the end user, who was mostly self-developer, he was compiling it and he could make it run. Okay, but the world has changed in between, so the last 15, 20 years, um, many people came onto the internet uh, on, in, in, into the software world who don't know how to compile. So uh, you get a package with a tar.gz at the end. So ask a, a Windows user what that is, or ask an Apple user. Hey, John. <laughs> you know what a tar.gz is? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Every now and then you find an exception. <laughs> um, or if you want to build a, uh, a, a C++ package, configure, make, make, install, or you have a pip install or something like that. So there are many ways uh, and, and many Many of the new users know about this stuff as, as much as I do about uh, driving an airplane. So you can imagine what happens, the thing's probably going to crash. So they're not in, able to install the software from, from the code, from the source code. 
So the free and open source community came up with an idea about packaging. So the developer, who was not only writing the code, was also taking care about pre-packaging his software into a so-called package, and that can be then distributed to the community, and they can install it using their package manager, which is provided uh, with their systems. Now, that made, uh, made the life easier for the end user, but it made it a little bit more complicated for the developer because there is not only one Linux distribution in the world, there are a couple of them. So he now needs to provide his package for various uh, distributions and maybe also for various releases. Hmm. So, and this is basically where the build service comes into the game. So the build service gives you an easy way from one set of sources building packages for various distributions. So, let's go into the details. We have three major packaging formats that's being used. This is the Debian format used by Debian, Ubuntu and so on. That is the RPM format using by Red Hat, Fedora, uh, Lino, uh, Suzy. And it is the package build format which is used for Arc Linux. The build service is supporting all of these and by this, supporting most of the distributions that we're currently having on the market. Next to the um, various distributions, it also supports various build targets, architectures. So this is of course the x86, uh, the standard Intel processor. It supports as well the 64-bit. Uh, um, more and more coming is the ARM architecture, and we also have some special um, setups, for example, the S390, which is the old IBM mainframe, which is, by the way, heavily used for uh, Linux vir uh, virtualizations. Um, as an output, you have various formats, for example, something that you can use immediately to build on a DVD with. You can have a single package or you can have a repository uh, which contains a set of packages, for example, like in the uh, Triton world. Um, this is a more technical thing, how this uh, um, uh, build service is set up. To be honest, uh, uh, if, you, if you're not focusing on, I wouldn't like to go into the details yet, but more have a, uh, a hands-on experience. So the whole build service is project-centric build up. That means, first of all, you when you log in with your user ID, you have one project by default, this is your home project. So you can link your project against other projects, you can create new projects, link them against other projects, and by this, build for various scenarios. In the end of the day, a distribution, for example, like the just the released uh, Open Source Leap, is also just a project. What's input? Um, once we have this, we can build for various repositories, for example, against this 30.1 or 30.2, and the charm is here. Um, I've, for example, a setup already done for one project. Uh, I add just another distribution to it and it builds against it. So nothing more to do for me. That is, of course, very easy. On the other hand, uh, the build service supports collaboration. So if you are building, for example, Python, for, uh, or you're building a Python packet like, like Triton, every now and then you come around a uh, uh, let's say, a, a new package, for example, like Python SQL. Who's developed that? Who has developed Python SQL? You can raise a hand, we know that's it. <laughs> so, um, you can build this, for example, and then submit it into a standard uh, repository. For example, devil languages Python. So the repository maintainer take a close look at it, come around several times and say, hey, you have to improve this in the spec file, you have to do this differently, and when the quality is right, they accept it into a standard repository. 
On the other hand, if you have uh, existing packages, like for example the Python GNU PG package, and it comes a new release, what can you do? You can fork it into your own build area. You can improve it, for example, by um, updating it to the latest release, and then you can resubmit it. And this can be done basically against every other project. So also users can branch your project and submit um, the changes to it. Uh, last but not least, next to the web front end, the build service has a very powerful um, API um, in terms of a command line interface. And what I will try to do now uh, with you together is we want to sit down and build one of the new modules for um, Triton that has been released or have been, has been added in the 3.8 uh, repository. Do you have any, any questions or remarks up to here? Just forgot this slide. This also means uh, we can build interactive uh, instances of the build service. So you can, for example, run a build service instance locally on your machine and connect this to the reference installation of build.opensusi.org, just as an example. Um, you can also use it and improve it because uh, build service is uh, open source, it's hosted on GitHub. So same procedure here, if you find a bug, fix it, resubmit it. Okay, um, let's start. What do we want to do? We want to create a package. We uh, build this uh, uh, locally, and then we can submit it to the reference server. So let me quickly go into uh, the build service. So I've already opened up um, the repository for Triton 3.8. What you can see here, it contains already a lot of uh, packages, but it does not contain one of the latest releases like Triton Customs. So what I do first of all, I just create the package here, for example. I'll say create package. So, and then it says Triton D underscore customs. I give it a title, the customs module of the Triton application platform. So, I change it, I save it. So what you can see here now, uh, this is the package. The package has no files yet. I can add files from here. And I can have here, over here, a section about the build results. So but not, let's not do that. Um, I have here a local copy of Triton 3.8 on my uh, machine. So what I will do now is I use the command line interface called OSC. I do a checkout on Triton D underscore customs. <coughs> so fingers crossed that it works because it's a quite a slow internet connection. Yeah, it says okay. Um, I've now created a working copy of Triton D Customs. Um, so, first of all, I go into that. So, still nothing in, so same picture as on the, on the build service. So, if we build against a Triton package, we have quite a neat uh, tool to do that, and there is a, a tool called uh, PyTopack, and PyTopack, uh, fetches the packages from the PyP and creates a spec file from it. So that gives us a, a, a quite easy start. So um, let's see, I have spy to pack already used somewhere here. Oh yeah, there. So we can search for example for Triton D customs. <coughs> Okay, it has found a package, Triton D Customs. 
I can fetch it. I think that is the right command. I'm not using it too frequently, to be honest. So it has downloaded it. Oh, now we have one package called Triton D Customs already in our build environment. And now we tell uh, PyTopack uh, it should create a spec file for it. So what I'm doing here, trying to do customs. Was in my age, you can't remember this command, so I have to scroll back and use the command line history. So what I'm telling here is, okay, PyTopack, go ahead and generate a spec, a spec file called tritondcustoms.spec. The spec file contains basically the build uh, information, if you've ever used RPM build or something like that, it's very similar to that. Um, and what it do, should do, it should use uh, the spec format. It can also create a, a Debian build format for this, for example. So, let's run it. Okay, ready, dear. So, uh, it has generated a, a spec format for us already. Uh, let's see. So this con basically contains the basis information that we would need to uh, to build this package, plus some setup stuff. Okay, um, good practice is always to have a changes file. So I create this changes file. And if I use OSC version control, it opens up the changes file and puts me already a time check into it. And I can add some information to it. For example, um, yeah, version 3.8.0. And this is the initial OBS build for that. Saved, done. <coughs> okay, now I have the, the, the basic stuff in there. Um, okay, I'm building now with a, a package that I've already in here. Uh, one very smart functionality is the download service. So what I could do is I could uh, copy, for example, from the other Triton package, uh, the so-called service file. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh yeah. <laughs> the service file gives instruction to the systems what to do. In this case, the service just contains an information that says download. So what the system do is, uh, when I run it later on without a downloaded package, it looks at the source and fetches the, uh, the, 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 the source file in the version that I've specified. So that makes uh, life quite easy. So and now we could go and see OSC uh, rep repos. What repositories do we have now well, where we could build against? Um, okay, it takes obviously some time. Okay, uh, OSC repos uh, lists basically all the repositories um, that are uh, available here. At the moment you cannot see any build repositories. You also do not see any changes because I have not checked in anything. Um, but if we go here, we can see the repositories that are currently enabled. So this is the enterprise version, OpenSUSE 13.1, 13.2, and 42.1, this is the, the latest leap release. Ah, okay, now he's ready here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I want to build now locally, and this is a very interesting thing. You can build, or you can use the build service 
and build your packages locally. What is the big advantage? So it has two. First of all, uh, one guy last year mentioned, oh, it takes partly so long until the build service rebuilds it. Oh uh, yes, that's true, especially if the machine is heavily loaded. Just to give you an example, um, right in the weeks before uh, leave was released, we had about 140,000 package builds per day. So this is uh, heavily using the hardware and uh, it's being replaced very soon. So if you want to work on it and try, you can always uh, build the stuff uh, locally and then uh, submit it later on. Second of all, what you also could do is, um, and this is the, the way how I came into the Triton packaging, we wanted to use Triton in our own company as a production system. But I wasn't right enough to install Triton from source. So this is why I started building Triton as a package and then install it and having all the advantages that my system offers. It gives me a package manager, I can easily install or in integrate this with System D. This is the System Start daemon, which is now basically every distribution is using. And the idea behind it was, install the basic stuff from the Triton repository and have the own development in, let's say, a hidden place, which is not being um, uh, published, uh, and uh, just build the RPM and install it from there, and I must say that worked perfectly. So we had to discuss.